everyone. Welcome to another Behind the Cash workshop build. And I really hope you guys are having a great day here um, today. It's Saturday. I know there's a lot of people, uh, you know, maybe out shopping right now. So I got out a little bit earlier this morning and it was still kind of crazy, but I am so glad that everybody is here with us uh, today. And we've got a special guest that's going to be on with us a little bit later. But first off, we wanted to finish off the build that we kind of started on last time. Well, it was more of a maintenance thing with after just doing some of the different, you know, beta testing that I really, really do stress about doing beta testing and checking it out, making sure anything if thing was working. I noticed that there was an issue with some of the read switches. So I've updated the different read switches. And this time, as I've gone live, I remembered to make sure that my microphone was going. So that's 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 always a plus. Uh, if if it sounds okay, let me know in the chat. If the music's too loud or anything like that, just let me know in the chat and I'll catch that as well. Um, but we're going to jump in here just really quick and start working on this cache to make sure everything's really ready to go. And we're going to walk through right where I left off. I mean, I haven't done any really any work since uh, the last uh, workshop live hangout on this because I wanted to complete this with you, you all in there. Uh, thanks, Daniel, for joining us. I see uh, Andrew Bell on the move is on here with us as well. Thanks for joining us. And there's several other people that are going to be coming in here. Um, all right. Thanks, Daniel, for letting me know everything sounds good so far. Sounds phenomenal. Love that. And so just let me know how you guys are doing. Are you guys ready for next weekend? I mean, we are a week out here in the U.S. or everywhere for Christmas, the holidays. Uh, so let me know. Uh, did you build anything special or anything like that that you can kind of do that? It's, it's crazy that it's we're a week out from the ho this holiday, Christmas holiday time. It, here in Memphis, it doesn't feel like it. I mean, today's it's a little bit cooler right now. It's about 46 degrees, but we had 75 degree weather earlier this week. Absolutely crazy. Had tornadoes last weekend. Another really crazy. And so just uh, hope everybody's safe. There was, Kentucky was really bad um, with hurricanes, not hurricanes, but tornadoes and everything. Um, so... But yeah, it's just been kind of crazy with everything going on. Um, those of us that have loved ones and some of this is going to be a really hard year for a lot of people too. So because of everything that's been going on. So keep those in mind as well. But let's go ahead and get to this build. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and switch up cameras and move th some things around. And I'll show you where we're at on what we're doing. So right now, so here's the gadget that we are working on. This is kind of, so you're seeing the inside of it right now. Um, so we have our wires coming in and this is the one where you turn it like I said before, you turn it here and it will uh, light up the LEDs that's right here and this code here is pigpen cipher so if you know pigpen that's what that is there um, so that just kind of tells you the combination I know last time when I was doing the build I had um, issues with trying to get the other the nine volt battery out of it um, what had happened is that when I put this piece in here and I'll try to move this in here a little bit when I put this piece in here, um, in, right here, it kind of, the, the PVC glue actually kind of hit onto the battery itself, or not, onto the battery pack and kind of glued it all in place. So trying to break that out. So I did that. And then one other thing I did uh, earlier is on the one set of wires coming off of the re switches on the inside, I marked it with red. So I know which one is to what. On the other side, I really don't. It doesn't really matter because it's we're just going to complete it a different way. So, but with that being said, so now what we're going to do is going to go ahead and start finishing up, getting everything ready to go. You come in here and you might be wondering, how are you going to kind of put all these wires back together? Well, I, once again, I like using the solder for this aspect of it. I'm going to be using the solder sleeves and the heat gun because it's just going to make it a lot easier to do it. And these are really secure and I don't know if you've seen these before, but these are the solder sleeves, and you use a heat gun. It works as as a put it in there. It has a solder in the middle, and as you heat it up, the solder actually melts and seals it, and then it also does the shrink wrap on the wire as well, so it protects it that way. So really great way of doing doing this. So um, that's just what we're going to do. So what remember on these LEDs? These are pre-wired LEDs, so the color is actually the negative. I know it's weird, but that's how that works out. The color is negative. The, the black is the positive. I wish they would change that on these on this brand, but 
they haven't and I'm, and i've tried several other brands and it's kind of been the same way with the other brands as well so but you know you just kind of deal with it so glad to see everybody on here today uh, wild bill and jabber uh Ah, so I'm glad you're able to join live. You said the stars finally aligned, and I'm able. Who was I knock it off? Join live. Um, remember, if anything's going to go wrong, it's going to happen during live. Uh, so just just last time I had the the computer jumped out on me uh, for a second, but if that does happen, I'll jump back in really quickly with uh, my phone until the computer comes back up, just in case. So just just be aware of that. Um, so, but yeah, thanks for joining us, Wild Bill and Sandra. Sandra Adams, thank you for joining us as well, joining me as well. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get into um, putting these wires together in here. And I will try to um, get the camera in the right position so that you can see as I'm doing it. Um, if it gets kind of noisy, I will mute my microphone and there'll just be kind of the music in the background, but so it won't be completely dead for you as well. So uh, just letting you know about that. And all right, so let's go ahead and get these in place. Now, probably what I ought to probably do you know, it's, I do have a plan of how I'm doing this, believe it or not. But as I'm trying to watch everything and do and talk and do all that at the same time, sometimes it gets kind of jumbled as I'm doing this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take the battery and I'm going to go ahead and wire the one set of the reed switches into the, the, the battery pack itself. So that, that'll be the easiest one. And then I can start getting the other part done. So, all right, so first off, let's take the, the batteries and I'm gonna get those wired in here. Now, I'm just gonna kind of tilt this. Hopefully everything will stay in place the way I need it to. All right, so there we go. Let me get this camera situated for you so you can see what I'm doing on the inside here. Sorry for it shaking up all over the place. But there you go. So hopefully that can help you see what, what's going on on the inside as I'm doing this. And I'm gonna try and watch what's going on on the, the screen as well as your comments and everything, as well as what's going on in here. And just uh, let me know if you guys are having a great time, if you're ready for next week, if, you know, just whatever's going on. Um, this is just a workshop hangout. If you see something I'm doing that you might think might work better, hey, put that in the chat. Just let me know. I'd love to see that. Um, just, hey, this is what this part of it is, is just kind of hanging out and just kind of, experimenting at the same time. I really hope these reed switches work because once once we get all this together and it doesn't work, well, I failed on this part of it, but you learn from failure, right? So, and that's what a lot of times as we're doing gadgets are, um, there's gonna, there, there may be some failures and we'll just figure it out from there. So let's go ahead and, and get this all wired up. So like I said before, the color on these reed switches or not resources on these LEDs is the negative. So I'm going to go ahead and wire up that first because the other end is going to be going to the reed switch. And then we'll take just the, the positive and run it into one side of the reed switch. And it doesn't matter which one I'm going to use. And then this other part of the reed switch will actually come into each one of the um, LEDs. So, and like I said, I'm going to be using the the solder sleeve. So I'm going to go ahead and do the negative is actually what I'm going to be doing on here. And I might open this up just a little bit more. And I love, absolutely, Chad got me started on these, these, um, those wire, um, these so I can actually, a lot easier than kind of when you're pulling the wires apart, just using this and any of these items that I'm using. If you want links for them, just let me know and I will put them in the description or get them to you. So just put those in the comments as well. So, but yeah, that's great to do, to doing this. All right. So now, like I said, I'm just going to do what I say, the negative. So there's the negative and I'm just going to grab the negative of each one of these LEDs and probably actually probably what I'm going to do is kind of put them together. Just make it a little bit easier as I'm putting them in there. Now, one problem with these pre-wired LEDs that also, there's a few things that I don't like about them, but this, the pre-wired LEDs are, the wires on them are really, really thin. And so you could probably tin it, but with going into the, the solder sleeve, it would probably be really hard to tin sometimes on this to make sure that it's there. So what I'm going to do is just kind of get all three of them together and just kind of twist them together, trying to see if I can get them 
as close as possible to the right length. And then I'm going to take the solder sleeve itself and slide it all in there and make sure that everything's right there at the end. And then the negative wire. Oops. Then the negative wire of the battery pack, I'm just going to slide in here as well. Get it all everything in there where it kind of meets right there in the middle. And then I'm gonna bring up break out the, the heat gun. Now this is where if it starts getting noisy, just let me know and I will um kind of turn it off. It shouldn't get too bad ouch, as I heat my fingers up. But that'll just kind of melt everything into place and seal it up at the same time. And I already see an issue when I was doing that. The green wire slipped out from under, underneath here. So uh, what I'm probably what I'm going to end up doing is going ahead and popping, going ahead and cut this off a little bit more. Actually, with it being still being hot, I should be able just to pull it right out. There we go. And that's another good thing about these solder sleeves is all you have to do is just heat it back up, and it'll come right back off. So now I just need to clean up this this black cable. So. And like I said, that's one of the things that about the um, the those little wires that's kind of a pain is because they are so small. It's really hard to sometimes get it all lined in there. So you're gonna ex experience you're experiencing some of the issues that that we all have as we're doing these um, these gadgets. Is that sometimes it goes together the, the first time, but generally it doesn't. So, so we're going to try that one more time. See if I can get those twisted really good in there this time. So, uh, Jonathan, good evening to you uh, from Wales, UK. Hey, welcome. Glad you're joining us tonight. Tonight, your time, it's here in the U.S. and in, in Memphis, it's uh, just a little after 3 o'clock. So it's 3.13 here. And here in a little bit, um, I'll tell you a little bit about Eric is going to be joining us. Eric is real is a really great gadget builder. I mean, I've seen some of the stuff. We're a part of a group together online, and seeing some of the gadgets and stuff that he puts together, smart caches, and it's some of them are just really great. He was also on CacheCon last year on the Geocache Talk Network, and it was just one of the really one of my highlights that I really love seeing his caches in that. And so we'll and we'll get to meet him here in a little bit. All right, so it looks like everything's in place this time. Um, I think what happened is that when the heat got, got a little hot, I moved my hand and accidentally pulled the wire out. So let's see, make sure everything's in place. All right, and now I'm going to use the heat gun with the solder sleeve and melt all that in place. And that just kind of seals everything up at the same time. Of course, we won't know if it all works completely until we get everything light up, lit up. Actually, a good way of testing this before we even get even further is going ahead and just kind of, without even putting the re-switches in, we can, um, I can take the other, the positive of the, of the, of the, the battery pack and put it to the, the negative or the positive to the LEDs and we can see if all the LEDs come on. Then we know that we got a good connection and then we can start messing with the read switch. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and see here, flip to this camera and I'm gonna kind of turn this up and I wanna be able to see, we wanna see these LEDs, see if they come on up here. So let me adjust this camera. Sorry about the thumb in the way. And I'm gonna come around here and Literally, all I'm going to do is just take each one and touch it. Okay, that one's good. That one's good. And one more. So, yeah, we're going to test this, and that one's good. So, we got all three colors there are good on that side. Now, what we need to do is go ahead and finish up the other side. So, now we're going to be using the solder sleeves once again and going from each one to the uh, we'll go from that the other part of the battery into all the reed switches with one solder sleeve kind of like what we just did and then we're going to take 
each of the other opposite end of the read switch and go into the connection. And I just realized I forgot to do one thing when I did. Oh, did I? Nope. Before we do this next section, I almost forgot. I have this cap here that has to go on the inside to where the wires are going to come off from the reed switches. So this will allow it to, this will pull this, this piece here back up here tight. And then that'll kind of lock it in place. And I'll make it a lot easier here in just a minute. So, so before we even get further, let me go ahead and do that because I can just see as I'm working and watching everything else, I would forget that and I'd have to cut those wires again. So, and I don't really want to do that. So let's go ahead and get that put on there. So, all right, so as you can see, I'm just going to take these wires. And this is all the reed switches from the inside. And I'm just going to push these through here at the same time. If I can get them through there. I probably should have. I had a little bit of tape on here earlier. And I probably should have kept that tape on here. But I'm going to go ahead and rotate this sideways. See if this makes it a little bit easier. So I'm trying to fight all the different aspects of this as I'm doing it. And I know this time I got some coffee over here. So I, hopefully I won't lose my voice this time as well. You know, I've always said, and I've done a lot of live production um, in my day job and everything like that. And if anything's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong when you're doing it live with the audience. So, all right, looks like I got everything. Oops. There's one left in there. All right. Make sure I got everything. There's one, two, three of those, three of those. Okay. So we're good. And then I'm just going to push this into place and lock that into place. All right. So that's good in place. And then the next step I'm going to do, as you can see here on the cape, on the wires, I hope you can see this, is, and I'm going to move this a little closer, is that I have... I've marked some of these with red. Okay, so those are just one side of each of the read switches. And that's just for my reference. So I'm just going to grab one set of, I'm going to grab all the red ones on this one. And I'm just going to put those uh, together. And then I'm just going to run all of those, the red ones, into the red wire and use a solder sleeve once again and put those into place. All right, so that's just, so I'm just going to kind of splice it all together once again. Um, it's actually, this is a really easy way of doing this. Um, but it, like I said, the biggest issue that I was having before was the read switch. And I just didn't like the way the read switch was just having some serious issues. So once again, I'll get a solder sleeve. And I probably end up going with a little bit bigger solder sleeve this time. Just And, I, they, and that's one of the things with the solder sleeves. They come in different sizes when you get the packs. Um, so you just kind of and this will be a little bit better with the thickness of the wire that's having to go in there. And once again, that, that kind of popped. And you're just going to have to make sure that when you put it in there, everything kind of stays together. And I may go ahead and open this wire up just a little bit. Give, me, give myself a little bit more wire on here. So I'll just use my... That way it'll actually so be able to spin. I'll be able to get a little bit more wire in there on these, which will help. Quite a bit at least with the bigger ones putting it having us splice these together like this this will help a little bit in here because it does it's not going to hurt it to overlap inside the solder sleeve in fact it'll probably make it a little bit better connection if you do it that way so all right so now i've got that in there really well and that's not going to that should not now that's Kind of twisted together really well. And then just use a solder sleeve. Slide that in place. And then I've got the, the red. And then I'll put this in place. Now, the only thing with this is that because that this blue one is so much bigger. You know, before I do the blue, let's see if I can get it in the red. Because the red's a little bit tighter. See if I can get it in there really good with it being a little bit longer because I'd rack much rather use the red than the blue just because of the spacing. And it always seems like there's one side of these solder sleeves that's a little bit bigger than the other. So there we go. 
Yeah, that's going to work a lot better. So the, this red one's going to look really work really well. All right, so that's in place. So now all I have to do is heat it up, and then that one is ready to. We're ready to start setting up the other side with the solder sleeves. Hope you're able to see how that kind of melts. And I'll show you, I'll try and get a good shot here in a second of how this actually seals this really well. I just did a project this week, um, non-geocache related, uh, using these solder sleeves and it really worked really well. So there's how, you, so you can see how that really kind of melts. The little orangish colors there is, is where the, um, where the um, the sharpie marker that I use is kind of what that is there. So that's all in place there. That's nice and sealed, and it's already everything's really good. So now all I do is take the each one of these other wires, the black wire or the positive wire off the LEDs. Yes, and I know those that are just joining you. I know usually black is negative, but on these pre-wired LEDs, it's positive. I've just stopped asking why on that. So what I'll do is now I'll just take each individual one of these and I may, just because of the sure size of these, I may actually add a little bit more cable, more wire to each one of these just to give myself a little bit more length, especially on this one, this one, or actually I could probably do that one to the shorter, to the first one here. That'll work, and I'll just kind of work my way as the length lies. What I'm trying to do is not have it pulling so much on here this time, um, and I'll figure out where I'm going to put the batteries later. Um, but that'll be like the last step that y'all don't need to have to see that part of it. That's just part of doing this, of maintenance-wise. And then I'll put this back out in my backyard, and I'll go out there and then test it off and on throughout the next few, next month or so, um, especially that will give me some idea of how it's going to do in weathering. Um, and everything. And then I did do this out of PVC board. So I'm not too worried about the weathering of this one. It's not going to expand. It's not gonna, that aspect of it. I just want to make sure that those reed switches are going to fire every time I move that arm and make sure that it's going to be perfect whenever somebody comes out. And so that's why I'm going to do that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and jump in with these, get the red. I just need three of these red solder sleeves and I'm going to start using these solder sleeves and go ahead and set up the rest of the wires. And like I said, using these solder sleeves is really great, especially for those of you that are uncomfortable with soldering or never really soldered before. And this just makes it really easy, especially if you're doing just wires together. It just, it, it really is the easiest way to doing this. And I have really, I don't remember who told me about these, but I just, once they, once I started messing around with them and using them, I was like, wow, where have these things been my entire life? I just, these are just such a great tool. And that's, and, and, and different things of it. I mean, my dad's not really great at soldering, um, doing different things. And if we ever had to use, fix one of these cables or anything like that, I always bring these over to do this. In fact, last Christmas, I was putting out my, some of my lights here at the house and I accidentally when I was I had got some the laser light and I was trying to trying to get them out there and they had that the zip tie on there and when I when I was cutting the zip tie I accident there was one of these thinner wires I accidentally cut the wire at the same time and so but because of knowing how to solder and I had these solder sleeves and this is gonna be a little bit tight trying to get it in here Working in these tight spots sometimes makes it really difficult to get these wires lined up. And like I said, it's live, and so you get to see all this stuff that usually nobody sees as we're working on it. And this kind of struggles of building a cache at live is always fun. All right, let's see if we can get that heated up real quick. So I slip this in here real slightly. And then heating it up, and it just melts. And that one's in place. Now, wash and repeat.
That's what we're going to do. We'll just go through this and just kind of keep it going. All right, so looking at this, see Ozzy, the geocaching, see my shells on here with us today. WNG says, I would use Wago uh, Kleeman for connecting the cables. I'm not sure what that what you're referring to is that. Um, if you might want to explain that, that would be great. Um, just don't know what that is. So, but, um, but I'm always looking at new ways of being able to do stuff. That would be really great. If it's a different type of connection, how we could do that. Yeah, just put that in the chat. Let me know what that is. Um, hey, I'm always trying to learn stuff. I, I've told my kids the day that I stop learning is the day that I die. I'm always trying to learn something new, and that's what I've always told my kids and different kids that I work with, like from doing FLL for First Lego League and stuff like that. We fail, and that's how, what we're going to learn from. So, so yeah, let me know what that is. Uh, WNG, just let me know what that is. I'd really love to learn about that. Um, and if that's a better way, hey, maybe I can do that on, on the next one. Um, so yeah, that's, that'd be great. So, all right, so let's get back to doing these other two and then we'll get into testing it to see how this all works. And hopefully by doing with this different read switch that I put in here, these are a little bit heavier duty to read switches. Hopefully this will fix the issue that I was having before of it not being consistent. And then also in one of the read switches in there, I think got stuck. Now, our guest, uh, Eric, was telling me earlier he's working with some different read switches and kind of working on an aspect of it. And we'll talk to him about that as well late here in a little bit um, about maybe a different way of doing some read switches. So in case you do have a failure, you're not completely always reliant on how that's going to happen. And I'm seeing that slip as I was trying to get this in here. It looks like that's got the connection. So just slip it in here. Heat it up. Okay. And what I'm, if you've looked at this, I have this little shield here, so it kind of doesn't blow all over the place. It kind of more directs. It's more directs. Let me flip this way. More directs the, the side of it. Uh, Darren from uh, Australia is has joined us as well. And we got two Aussies on here. Of course, I know see my shelves actually in New Jersey. Um, but still, great to have you on here, Craig and Darren. So, plants from a company called Wago. Okay. So, yeah. So, it's a, oh, so, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. So, it's a different type of clamp um, where I think if I've seen these right, it's, it's, it's a splicing aspect of it. I think I've used some of those on something that I got from um, Ikea on some lighting that I did in my kitchen. Um, maybe that's what those are. So, but yeah, those are a really great idea. Uh, great too. I've looked for some of those. I think I've seen some of those at the box store down the street, um, but I just hadn't gotten, gotten those since I had all of these solder sleeves. But that is a great, another great aspect that you could do as well. And so, yeah, that's 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 cool. Thank you. All right, let's get this last one in here, and then we will see if everything works. All right, looks like that's all. Okay. So now, now it's time for the moment of truth. So we'll see how this all works. We're just going to, I'm just going to leave the battery sitting up here at the top for right now. Okay. Moment of truth. Looks like. All of them are working. And now the other thing that I'll do is actually when I get it in place where I want it to be. So, all right. So let me actually, let me switch to here. All right. So see how this is kind of sitting up here. And when this turns, what I need to do is, and I did this with some screws, and I'll do this here in a little bit. Um, it'll just take some little bit of time, but I'll actually put a stopper screw here and one at the bottom, so it won't it'll only go so far a certain way. Um, right now, I had to make with the different type of reed switches, I had to make them a little bit longer, uh, the pipe a little bit longer here. So by doing that, it when I rotate it, it doesn't go all the way down. But as you can see. All, 
all the different as they rotate it back and forth. Well, it was. So let's see if we can do it again. I see the blue one and red and green are going. So it just takes a little bit. And I don't mind it going back and forth a few times and trying to figure out what those are. So now all I have to do is put this back out, back out in the backyard and kind of be testing it and see how all of that works. So that is just wanted to finish up that, how to show you how I did that. And this will get attached. It'll probably get attached up here at the top. Let me show you that again. So the battery, I'm actually will take the batteries out and I'll attach it up here in the top. And just make sure that this is nice and clean. So it, it's, and I'll zip, probably wire tie these and make sure these things aren't rub, the wires aren't rubbing as easily. So, but that's kind of a really easy, quick fix of this using the different reed switches. A little heavier duty reed switches on here. Now I have the, the magnet side of the reed switch here. So you kind of see how big this one is in here versus the little plastic ones that I've had on some of my other caches. Um, this is, I think this is going to be a little bit more resilient and a little bit stronger and hopefully it'll last a lot better um so but who knows when you do a different mega or different things and your caches are being found quite a bit the and that's one thing with the gadget cache doing as at a for a mega or anything like that they're going to get slammed really hard and they could completely get messed up just because caches generally aren't found 100 times in a day so <laughs> it's going to put some serious uh stress on there but so that was one, like I said, this was just kind of a really quick one, just kind of finishing up this, this here. And there'll be a few little things like I'll put the screws back in uh, so it doesn't rotate all the way around all over the place. But Eric, are you ready? I see you back in the back. Are you ready for me to bring you on? Give me a thumbs up. All right. So we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and bring on Eric, our guest, and I'll let you guys all meet Eric. Hey, Eric, how are you doing? Hey, Derek. How are you? Doing well. Good. Good. Let me get the background back on there. <laughs> so, so welcome to Behind the Cash Live. And thanks. Before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're located, and uh, what is your favorite type of cash to put out. Sure. Um, my name's Eric. I go by uh, the username Hi Liston. Uh, I'm in Massachusetts, USA, about uh, two hours west of Boston. Okay. Um, yeah, I've been cashing for about 12 years now, although my first gadget was maybe only five or six years ago. Um, I like doing smart gadget caches, although I have a, a few non-smarts too, and I'm not sure if it's a thing or not, but it tends to be that my non-smart gadget caches tend to be uh, more favorited, and I don't know if it's just because, actually, I don't really know why, but I still, <laughs> I've, um, my wife got me a, uh, like an Arduino learning kit five or six years ago, and uh I messed around with that for a bit. I'm like, hey, this would be fun to do with uh, with gadget caches. And uh, I also have a hobby as a woodworker. I make uh, arts and craft style furniture and the woodworking. I'm actually I'm in I'm in my shop now. Um, right. The combination of the woodworking and the the electronics just seem like a uh, an ideal mesh for for gadget caches for geocaching. Right, and that's I'm kind of the same way. I got into doing a little bit of smart cache by the same kit. Probably even the same little Spider kit. Man, and now yeah. my, son, my son has one of those as well, and working with him is on that with him too. So that's really cool. I love that. Um, as you were saying with woodworking, as we're going to get into some different caches, what type of wood do you like building your containers out of? Is it cedar or what do you so, like using? Yeah. When I first started, I actually made my first cache out of red oak. But uh, over time, it started failing, which maybe a lot of. Uh, any kind of cash builder might know if they build it out of wood, it can it can have problems. Um, I know some people get around that by really uh, putting almost a fiberglass seal around right. it or a, a rubberized right. coating, and that that'll absolutely work. I've switched over to that PVC board that you were just showing. Um, yes, for a lot of them, and that seems to be holding up pretty well. Um, I've had one out out of PVC about three years now, and uh, it really doesn't look any different than the than the day it was put out, which is nice. Wood tends to fade or get mildewy, and I right. haven't been seeing that on the uh, on the PVC. And I am painting it too. I mean, outdoor paint, but uh, right. Yeah, it's that holding was my up next nicely. question. How do you paint? Yeah. What do you use to paint on on them or anything like that? So I prefer to just use an outdoor spray paint. Um, I'm okay. lazy like that. I know it's it's probably the most <laughs> expensive way to paint something is with spray paint. 
Um, but I don't like have a uh, an air gun for painting. Um, right. Something I'm, I'll demo today. I'm actually just using a, a bare Home Depot exterior grade paint on it. Um, okay. So one of those two things. I, I've actually I've done a polyurethane on something I wanted to still look like wood out in the wild, and that's been out eight months. Pretty much, I put it out in March, April, and it's been holding up good. I was a little worried um, because again, I just got the spray paint version because I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And there were a lot of nooks and crannies to it too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I made a bunch of gears, um, and that's holding up nice. That's really cool. Because I know in in, the, in our group that we, if our small group of like thirty builders or whatever, how mm. many are in there? I know I saw a question this last week with uh, from Steve, and he was asking about the how how does the PVC board do with paint? And I'm I've done a little bit of paint on mine, but mine have pretty much been staying white right now. So that yep. was a good question. I'm glad that you were able to answer that because I know I'm really recommending this PVC board because it does last better. Yeah, and I get the spray paint says right on it, wood, plastic, metal. So right. I'm counting PVC as plastic. So uh, yeah, seems to hold. That's, re that's really cool. I really like that. Um, yeah. And plus the PVC board would be in, in different climates. I mean, you're, like I said, you are telling me earlier yeah. you had what, six, six inches of snow today? We have it coming. I would maybe three to five probably coming overnight. Yeah. We got a so, dusting on the ground already right now. Yeah. No, we do. We will get into the low hundreds in the summer and, you know, we can certainly hit negative 10 Fahrenheit in the winter. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a fun range. Yeah. And I like how that you said you have one that's been out there for three years now and it, it looks the same way as it did the day it went out. And that's, yeah. I think that's really, that really says a lot to the material. Um, yeah, I have. TV yeah, TV. one of my older ones that I've actually deactivated because there's construction in the area. And like, like you, I oh. made one for a uh, Omega five or so years ago. It's one of those wacky wire caches where you take the the eye hook and you try to bring it around the wire without touching it. Kind of a constant or a operation kind of thing, steady hand. And I made that out of wood, um, and it's held up pretty good. It's not. It's like two hours away from me. I have a, a friend who does all the physical maintenance and I'll pop out there once a year if there's like, I got to replace an led or something. Right. Um, but, uh, the issue with that one is that one had a, a door that pops. So a, uh, oh, okay. a servo or whatever inside that would uh, pop it. But the door was made out of wood and it, it has expanded twice and gotten jammed. And he has to go out there. I, <laughs> I sent him a can of the spray paint to match the color and he right. has to go out there and like plane the edge out in the middle of the oh. woods, right? Because it's at a, right. it's at a ski resort um, in, in a wooded section, not on the trail. Um, you know, obviously with the ski resort's permission, they they love people coming and check it right. out. Right. Um, but yeah, and I keep thinking to myself, oh, I should replace that with a PVC door <laughs> and save him the effort of constantly going out there. And people's disappointment when they hear, I mean, they hear the click, but it, uh, it doesn't pop. Yeah, yeah. And we had a question here um, coming in from Paul. Um, and I think I, I think I already know the answer to this. But he says I spray uh, spray with a primer and quality paint. Does the PVC get brittle? Because I think he's thinking like the plastic ammo cans in the winter. Because I've I've seen several mm -hmm. geocaching vlogger videos. He'll go and it'll be snow on the ground and be ice. He grabs the PVC the plastic PVC or plastic ammo can and it snaps. Or he put a foot in one of them. And, and I think that's where uh, Paul's thinking. Have you seen any issues with the PVC board in the winter? with it being any brittle or anything so like that. So if someone tries to force it, um, I had someone try to rip the roof off one of my birdhouses and it did snap. Um, I suspect wood would have as well because of the amount yeah. of force necessary. But I mean, the PVC board is is a half inch. It's a lot thicker than the ammo can. Um, right. And all of mine are like up on a post, again, with permission. Um, right. So it's not like people are trying to get it out from in between ice on the ground or anything. So the container itself, they don't generally have to move. So I think that reduces the wear and tear. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't seen any other than people trying to force stuff, which right. I put, I actually put my phone number on every geocache I put out and tell people to text me. I won't answer <laughs> a phone from an unknown phone number, but if someone texts me and says, Hey, I'm at your cache. Right. And right. this is happening. You know, I'll uh, talk them through it. Right, they're right, there. Yeah. I want them well, to I, have fun. 
Yeah. I kind of do the same thing, except I have, I have them go through the geocaching app. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. I just so got I, a Google voice number, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's 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 cool. Now, when you do your PVC board caches, are you mm -hmm. using any nails or screws or anything like that to attach them, or are you just using PVC glue? I use the PVC glue, and then I, I also screw it together. I use, not that it. Not that anybody can't deal with it, but I'll usually use like a hex head or, or a square head or a security head as opposed to just a straight up Phillips. Um, but they are screwed together. A lot of the times the screws are on the interior, so you don't see them from the outside. Okay. But uh, I do, I don't know if the glue is rated to hold at like minus 10 Fahrenheit, for instance. Right. So I, I do add the screws. Right. And that's, and that once again, that's just due to, different climates that you're that you're mm -hmm. all are in so yeah that's, i mean that's, if it yeah if i was in the south u.s where i mean i know it gets colder down there but uh maybe probably not below 20 fahrenheit too much i might be okay with just the glue yeah yeah probably just glue i know at mine i've just done done the glue um i may go and add some nails or something like that here too a little bit yeah so but all right so now we've gotten to kind of know you a little bit and, and that was, I really like about the PVC board. That's, that was, that's some really some great information there. Now let's yeah, go ahead and for jump people in listening in the U S you know, in the U S most home depots and Lowe's, the big box stores tend to carry it. You got to kind of look, um, I can find it in a four by four sheet, but they sell it in eight by four and right. You know, get it cut in store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And well, and I've used just the, like the siding sides. Oh, the so trim boards. Just, yeah. Yeah. The trim boards. And then, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I've actually ran it through. Uh, I've done tongue and groove on it, and it actually works really great to make it a little bit wider. Oh, so interesting. Yeah, no, I get the four by four sheets, so I've never had uh, had to butt two surfaces together. Um, and I think we we chatted about that before. I have a a, a CNC, so uh, yeah. it's nice to have the big flat board and just cut out the shapes and and everything I need. Yeah, that that that'd be that'd be nice. <laughs> All that drafting classes I took in high school paying off. <laughs> yeah, it's it was like I built a. A, a production box this week for my switcher and different things. My mom was looking at it. She goes, all this wiring and all this stuff. Did you learn how to do all this with doing building your gadgets? Um, yeah, kind of pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did drafting in high school. Well, yeah, no electronics until not even in college. I did engineering, but there was no electronics involved. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was that starter kit my wife got me and so much reading and YouTube videos on. Yeah, yeah. Arduino YouTube wiring. Is, YouTube is yeah. key. It so. is. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna bring up one of your the gadget that you're sure. working on right now. So here, uh, walk us through what what you're doing. Oh, here. that's still dim, man. Derek, this room has never been so light. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, uh, it was earlier. No, it's okay. Um, yeah. We're, so we're, I am working we're on. See a, what counts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm working on. This is actually a non-smart cat gadget cache. I I I brought the stuff together for two that I'm working on. I know a lot of geocachers will keep a, uh, like a backup second cache in, in their right. workshop. I don't do that. Um, so I don't have anything out there to, to demo, but this is based on Tetris and this is not a smart cache. Um, I can put my hand in there to get a feel for size. It's reasonably big, that, that thing's but, huge. <laughs> but I've been getting, and, and I, I actually brought this up just to show I've been getting, uh, whoa, uh, like, land managers because i have that okay. cnc i can make stuff like this right and i'm like hey i'll trade you for some signage if you let me put some gadget caches <laughs> in and uh i've been getting some good response i've actually had one actually contact me that i've never addressed and they're like hey are you interested in putting some caches in our property which is uh kind of a first for me it's always um, good. when you have people asking you to put stuff out versus yeah. you don't ask them. That's, that's a good problem. I'm, I'm sure, like you, I got a, I have a full time job and a family and everything else. It's yeah, not a lot yeah. of free time. Winter's a no. little better. So this one it's based around Tetris. Um, and I started. Can we see over here? We can. So I started with paper. These are okay. just blue pieces of paper that I cut out into various Tetris like shapes. And I'm like, all right, I want the geocacher to solve. A Tetris problem, um, but you know, as as you know, or any any gadget cash maker out there knows, you really only want to have one solution, right? Right. Or if you have to have more than one solution, you got to make sure that both solutions give you the same answer, right? So uh, I started, you know, messing around, putting shapes together, you know, getting these pieces, kind of seeing how I could get them to fit. 
And I knew, and this is not all the ones I made, I just kind of has a demo here. I knew that I needed this, this to be 10 across because you can see up top here, zero through nine across the top. Right, okay. Um, this is, they're basically solving for a lock combination. And basically you can see along the bottom and it's real, not real clear, but there's a hexagon, a square, a circle and a triangle. And I'm saying right. the combination is those orders of shapes. Um, because there could only be one solution, you have to start limiting possibilities. Um, so in this case, I took all the straight pieces and these are gonna be fixed in position. They're gonna be screwed in from the back. Um, they'll always be there. Right. And instead of giving them like individual pieces to put in, because I couldn't figure out a way to have only one solution to do that. <laughs> um, I put like three pieces together and made different shapes. Okay. Um, like these. And you can see that one actually has a square on it. So wherever that square ends up, right? If the square ended up here, that squ square would mean eight. So the eight. second digit would be an eight in the combination. Okay. Um, and eventually, it's not done yet, but you can see I'm going to paint these. It's a little easier to see. Eh, it's not coming up real good because of lighting. But, um, you know, I will color the, the Tetris uh, correct colors. Um, I don't know if you've ever, you know, I went and went to the rack, rack at my big box store, found a bunch of oh, colors. Right. And uh, these little samples are like two or three bucks a container. For yeah, so much better. So much better. And it's, <laughs> it's an exterior house paint, right? So so it's fine. It can it can it'll manage outside. And yeah, the idea is to take all of these shapes, and I, I do have them all here, um, and to put them in. And you have me on the spot here because I don't have this particularly well memorized. I that's, do remember no, that's fine. Yeah. Um <laughs> I do remember, you know, they can fit wherever, you know, wherever they'll fit. They could go, um, but eventually, you know, you'll realize that oh, if I put this one here, then this little two, two space gap, nothing's going to fit there. Um, right. So everything's so, going to fit and it's gonna fill the entire piece up. Right. It's going to fill the whole thing. And if I remember this correctly, and I'm not sure I'm going to. <laughs> that's right. And those that are watching, yeah. uh, have you ever found one that's like this? Something similar to this? Or if you remember playing Tetris or what do you think of this 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 project? Because I think this is absolutely phenomenal. And hey, actually, when your arm went in there, the camera actually irised up. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I see no, what yeah, you're yeah. saying. It did, didn't it? Yeah, it's, it's like the auto sorry. iris is going. So no, no, that's I fine. don't do a lot um, of uh, webcast. Iris up <laughs> took me a second to understand what you meant. Um. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not going to do it here because I'm not going to get it right. And let's not waste everybody's <laughs> time. But let's get these. Let's say this was part of the solution, you know, and it would be hexagon is in four square right. in columns, you know, four, zero, yeah. six, six, seven, seven, you know, and by solving the whole thing, that's how they would get the, the combination to uh, to the lock that would have the, you know, the log in the box and everything in it. But yeah, no electronics here. I know we had been in a group. We had talked about read switches for this. You know, we had talked about instead of right. using these shapes, hiding magnets. Ooh, I'm off camera. Hiding magnets in the uh, the back of these and having right. read switches on the other side. And if you put them in the right spot, if all the read switches get pulled from the magnets, then the container could pop open. And that's probably a cooler effect. Um, oh, I can see your solution, by the way. You are pretty close, it looks Am like. Am I pretty close? All right. <laughs> <laughs> At um, least I see where I some of them go. Like that one me, will fit that... right, yep, right there. No, that can't Well, fit maybe there. not. Maybe I was wrong. Although, maybe that one doesn't go there. Oh, we're getting warmer. Okay. And that one goes there. Yep. There we and go. And that one, there you go. There we go. So that's the solution. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There's the solution. So, so this is recorded that's... forever for when uh, someone... Comes to well, figure you can this out. You can move through your dots. That's true. I can move the dots. <laughs> so, but that's, and you know, the whole thing will be colored, and when it's done, yeah. Yeah, I really love that. Be I mean, even though it's not a, a smart cache, but it's it's the way it comes together. It just looks really great. I just it's Thanks. the workman, your craftsmanship on that. Of course, having the CNC machine that that helps a lot. 
definitely does. Otherwise, this would be a lot of uh, a lot of router table work. Oh yeah. So yeah, um, these, yeah. Hailmeister saying, uh, I used to play Tetris on Nintendo quite a bit when I was a kid. So I did too. Yeah. Remember the original I, Game I, Boy in, in homeroom in high school someone had. Yep. Oh man, the little how old I am. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I had one too, so it's okay. And all I know right. Hailmeister probably did too. So we're all we're all right there. It wasn't even in color for those if you're younger no. young enough to remember that. It was it was like a green. It was not backlit, it was not in color. Yeah. No. You cannot play it in your bed at, at, at night without a flashlight. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, no, I just looking at this, looking at, at how you put this together and I've lost my mouth. There it is. Um, how this has come together is just really amazing. Uh, well done. And well, thanks. I know it's, you know, halfway there. So, and I know even Chad bounce bounce was, as always said, that the ones, uh, even his that are not smart caches seem to have higher favorite points. He's mm. like, he's got one that he absolutely hates and wants to replace it, but it's so high on his favorite point on favorite points. He's like, I don't know why everybody likes it. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I was worried at first and I, you were on the group when I chatted about this. I'm like, should I worry about people walking off with these parts? Because right. they are just freely in the cache and, right. uh, you know, talking to you, a few other gadget builders are like, no, we've never had an issue with that. And, uh, Sure enough, I you know I mentioned I put out a cache this spring that dealt with uh, gears, right? Um, cut out of wood again, and I was because that's what I was worried about because they were kind of a pain, take a bit of time to make, and uh, yeah, almost uh, almost a year out there, and yeah, they're doing fine. People love posing with photos with all the gears in their hands, but uh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, and with building ourselves, and I know Rumbacast does this, he makes backups, and having it all in the CNC, yeah. you always make the backup pretty I easy. I do. I mean, I have all the files. Yeah, it would... Now that I've made one, making more would not be a big deal, but the first right. time is always... The, the prototype's the, always the hard one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so. the, yeah, the amount of these I have... Uh, I'm sorry, here. The amount okay. of uh, pieces I made, you know, trying to decide how big to make them, um, you know, because at first, this was like half the size it is now. And I'm like, ah, they're kind of small. Right. Um, want a good size to handle, especially, you know, up here. People are going to be doing this in the winter with mittens on, that kind of thing. You think about all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, this is an easy one to reset because people just take all the pieces off take and put the them back off. in the bin. Yep. You know, I'm sure you've emphasized, or I've heard you emphasize yeah, that, that in your, your cast is resetability. Reset. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've seen some that would take forever and like, they're not going to reset this all the way. Um, yeah. I, I, there's, I've seen some with like with a rope and you have to get the, get it to reach to the lock with the key on it. And they have to redo when they put it back, they have to redo the puzzle backwards or something. Mm -hmm. If they've taken two hours just to get the rope out there and they're not going to take another two hours to put it back. I, I right. wish they That's... would, but it, I just don't see the resetting of that one is easy, but this you just dump it and you go. So, yeah. I'm hopeful. And this is not the first Tetris, you know, idea I've seen for a cache. This is not my original right. idea, but um, there's not one in the area like it. Right. And that's, and, that's what's uh, cool. Yeah. So yeah, it, it won't be out till next year. I'm actually working with a local orchard um, oh, that's owned, by, owned by the town who I said, Hey, you interested in some signage? <laughs> they have to be a 10th <laughs> of a mile apart, but, uh, <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> They were, uh, they seemed gung ho. So, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I've, you know, I've definitely found the more gadgets you put in one place, the more you draw people from a distance because I am not at any kind of crossroads. Like I said, I'm about right. two hours west of Boston. And even though you think of Massachusetts as a pretty densely populated state, I mean, we're tiny, but I think we probably have the same population roughly as Tennessee. Um, it's still, you know, it's kind of nowhere land. Right. But uh, right. people come out and visit. And I figure. Some, and you got some other gadget builders up there too. You got Cash Tweep yep. up there as well. So um, and we have Met Metallica uh, 1967, I think he is. He's not in any of our groups, but he has a series of awesome gadget caches out. I've been considering yeah. talking to him and Cash Tweep and seeing if we could come up with a whole series together. But that'd be uh, really cool. Yeah. I definitely need to get up to your area because I want to get. Cash dweebs, yours, and some other ones up in that area. Uh, just making that aspect, that'd be a lot of fun. So, all right. So, 
so we've seen your Tetris one that you're working yes. on. You said you have another one. So this was yeah, I, I have one more. It. I don't want to call it this, but this so this would be a non-smart cash. Not going to say a stupid sure. cash. But this is a non-smart cash. Absolutely, <laughs> gadget, gadget cash. So, so but you're working on a, a smart cash as well. Yeah. So, so I'm going to get up for a second to flip around. Okay. I don't have the amazing studio that you do. All right. So as as uh, Eric is switching up, I just want to say th I want to thank everybody for joining us today um, for this live workshop hangout for behind the cash. Um, this is our second one. And I also hope that everybody's having a great uh, holiday season. See Oz Fox is wishing everybody season's greetings uh, to everyone. So thanks you. Yeah. I just love having all these different ones from Aus uh, Australia and New Zealand, and everybody around the world jumping on today. It's a lot of fun. Um, Eric's working on getting his, uh, this other one set up and while he's doing that, so I just really do appreciate everybody for coming in uh, and joining us. Um, if you just join us, and maybe later after we go off air here, you can go back to the beginning and you can see how I fixed, finished up the, the gadget that we did. We're starting, or that I was fixing last month. And so I was able to get all that working. Those reads, which looks like they're working really well, but I'm going to put it back out in my backyard and make sure that everything is, see if I can break it. That's, that's, that's the whole point of beta testing, see if I can break it. Um, so <laughs> Gary's just joining us right now. He says, I'm in a crowded uh, restaurant, but had to join. So thanks, Gary, for joining us uh, here. So great. Thank you. Uh, Daniel saying, a great show so far. I'm enjoying the ideas so far as well. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Yeah, these are just, uh, and that's what I really love doing uh, is just really sharing ideas, sharing concepts of different builds and just y'all can run with whatever I create and just see what you can come up with your own spin on it. Just really, that's that's what I do. That's what I love sharing that aspect of it. And that's what we do on Gadget Talk podcast with Chad. Uh, him and I will work together and we'll just kind of come up with different ways to being able to share different concepts um, and do that. And once again, I'm really big on cache maintenance and beta testing. So that's why if you go onto my profile, you see that I don't have a lot of gadgets out there. And that's because I am only going to put out what I'm going to maintain. And coming up, of course, with Cash Fest coming up here in Memphis, July 16th, we're going to have a ton of gadgets out there here in the area. So if you want to come to that, hey, go check, check it out. Uh, go to cashfest.com and go in, onto the website and you can go to log your Williton on to geocaching.com and be able to check it out there. there we still have some pre-event uh, coins for sale, uh, guitar coins for that, so you can check that out. And last week on Geocache Talk, we also talked about the episode, so you can check that out on the Geocache Talk Network. So, all right, Eric, you ready? I think so. Okay. So, all right, I'm going to bring your other camera back in. and uh, Sure. Tell us what, what we got going fingers on. Fingers crossed. It's always uh, smart caches are always uh, interesting. Oh, especially oh, let me okay. let me focus a little here. That's all right. Okay, I've seen I've seen pictures of this one on on our group. So yes. All right. So yeah. So I am starting to work with RFID chips on this one. Again, other gadget smart gadget cache builders have done it. It has been a a long and and fun process <laughs> of figuring out how these all work. Sorry, let me. I didn't have no, the camera good. up to see how it uh, how it was all fitting on screen there. And right, camera's backwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I've been playing around with RFIDs. Um, you can see I, I've got a few different chips here that I've been messing with. Um, right. Get that one in there too. So this is uh, Adafruit is my favorite supplier of smart pieces. Okay. Um, and it's out of focus. But uh, this is to write to RFID chips. And it's just, it's taken a lot of messing around. Um, these are little readers here. You can kind of see the, the the symbol on them there. They're meant right. to read RFIDs. I could not get them. I could not get more than one of them to work at once. And for what I wanted to do, I have needed four or five or more RFID. RFID reader simultaneously. So speaking of tough to reset caches, I'm, uh, I'm working on a D5 cache that I'm gonna be calling the card catalog. It's uh, gonna be based for the older folks on the on the call, on the uh, the old style card catalogs that used to be at libraries where you right. would have to go, you know, all those drawers, um, you find the, the author and you had to pull the door, drawer and find the card. 
it's going to be a sequential puzzle to basically open each drawer to eventually get to the cash container in the final drawer. Oh, wow. Part of that is going to involve a, uh, a chess set on top of the card catalog. Okay. So as you go through and open each drawer, there will sometimes be a chess piece inside. Um, I have some here. It's a king there, a pawn, um, a rook here. Now I'm starting to realize that shooting from the top up makes this a little trickier to see. Um, so the idea is as you pull these out, you're going to get a, 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 a chess piece, and you're going to have to figure out um, where to put the chess piece. And then eventually, you're going to have to make some moves with the chess piece to put the your opponent in checkmate. Oh, wow. OK. Yeah. Should be fun, right? Yeah. So and of course, those that don't know how to play chess are going to have to Google how to play chess. Exactly. <laughs> well, I said D5. I'm not making up yeah. any rules, but yeah. <laughs> so uh, the idea is. Right, is these chess pieces need to have RFID readers on them. Um, right. And let me start with, let me zoom in on just this bottom one. So I started off with these. Uh, just the cards themselves, yeah. Just the cards themselves, because it was just easier to deal with. And I apologize, Derek, I don't have the. No, you're right. Like I said, this is live. Everybody's used to this. <laughs> There we go. That's in focus. There we go. And you can see how it, you know, it'll say Rook right on the screen. That right. screen is not going to be part of the uh, final cache. It is just there for my sanity as I work through this to see that okay. it works. Because this is just plugged into the wall, right? It's not plugged into um, any any computer right now. Right. All the, all the programming is, you know, on this is a uh, over here. It's the equivalent of an Arduino Uno. It's uh, a Metro that, again, Adafruit makes. Okay. I, uh, again, can't say enough good things. Generally, sometimes they don't have parts I need, and I'll get them off eBay or whatever. But generally, when I do that, I buy one or two more than I need because yeah, they're not, they're, gonna possibly fail. they're not the yeah. greatest quality, and generally, at least one of them doesn't work. Right. So I started doing this. Something else I learned as I was doing this, for the hell of it, <laughs> <laughs> I took my phone and put it up to one of these. Is it going to read it? No, of course not. Why would it cooperate now? It won't, it won't cooperate live. That's, that's, yeah. that's a rule of thumb. If I, uh, there it goes. So um, down at the bottom there. Oh, okay. It says tag found. And if you hit it, and. It says night. It says night. So it turns out my phone can read these cards. I didn't know my phone could do that. My phone is nothing special. It's, you know, a couple hundred bucks. I don't get the, the top of the line phones. It's, so it's that was the cool. NFC, it's, it's the NFC that's in there that's, that's reading right. that. Okay. Exactly. So that was cool to see. It, it again, made my life a little easier programming because I wrote on these cards to, uh, to keep them, you know, straight. But, you know, you put it down, it takes a second. And uh, it is not resetting, is it? No, that one didn't reset. The fun of live. Let me uh, let me reboot. <laughs> let me reboot that. I'm having issues with the pull-up resistors. Ah. Um, well, and this goes sorry. back to testing, and as we're yeah. working through different things, <laughs> that people put, think about when they put a gadget cache out. That, oh, they just put this out there. It's, there it's go. always going to work. So, you don't think about all the work that it takes to put it to get to from from thought yeah, to because out. right this yeah. has to work 100 percent of the time it's not there yet um, right but but i feel like it can be there um so obviously this does not help you know these pretty much id cards do not help with uh the actual cash but what they do make and i've actually put them on the bottom of each one of these is um stickers yeah the little stickers the stickers yeah that's what i was gonna right. i was gonna ask you about those so i have actually taken this crappy plastic chess set that i found in our closet <laughs> and um put a bunch of stickers the rook's really the only one that sets upside down correctly and you can see i wrote little letters on them again for my own sanity they won't be there on the final cache right and um yeah and what i can do now and i'll again with the cnc i made these little little boxes to kind of uh 
represent a chess square, and these fit right on top of the uh, oh the board. Phenomenal. That's great. So let me zoom out a hair, see if I can get more of these sensors to appear. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this is going to come. Your final product of this, because I'm loving the, what, the concept of what you got going on right now, and and I know we'll you can, we'll get to this a little bit, a little bit, but I'll go ahead and let you think about this, and yeah. you may be able to say it as we're going through this. Where do you get your inspiration from? I mean, I know a lot of us as gadget builders, we watch Chris Ramsey, um, seeing wow. smart, yeah, smart boxes, um, or escape room from that aspect of it, and just yeah, just the chuck where you get your idea. Exactly it. Chris Ramsey is where the chess <laughs> idea comes from. That I was wondering if it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, they did it, or the company he paid for did it. I'm like, yeah. I can figure that out. <laughs> um, but yeah, same thing. I love going to escape rooms. Of course, with the uh, with the pandemic, there haven't been a lot open lately. Right. But uh, you know, I've certainly got ideas from there, and then I get ideas from just I've gotten ideas from carnival games. That wacky wire thing I mentioned is, uh, you know, from just a carnival game, right? And other just home games. Um, I have a cache lights out that's based on that. Uh, I think the game is just called Lights Out, and I am off camera because I moved it. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's real professional here, Derek. Yeah, that's um, right. Hey, it's live. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now you can see that you know that signal still gets through. You know, put the knight here, the bishop down bottom, and I don't know. Is that screen readable? The, L I can, the LED yeah, I screen? Can, I, can, I can see a little bit of it. I all can right. see that there's words on there. I can't read it. But so, I yeah, I can put them all on there. And uh, yeah, I see where it says rook and yeah, all that now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there, there we, we go. go. Rook, knight, pawn, and bishop, right? Bishop, yeah. And then if I were to say take the uh, the knight off this one and put the king on, it would uh, yeah it switches. It reads it as king. Yeah, it reads it as king. So it's reading those stickers, you know, through the wood, um, with and just the sticker on the back. You know, when that's when these are done, I will probably glue like a felt bottom to them, make right. them look a little fancier, and people won't realize that there's even a sticker on them. You know, the idea is yeah. the, the, the person solving it won't even understand that there's an RFD involved. Right. Now, is that going to fire off when you get it into the right position? Is it going to fire off a latch or how's that? How are you so doing that? without getting into too much detail, um, as you find each chess piece, there will be information about where to place it. It won't be obvious information. Um, okay. If people are familiar with chess notation, it'll make more sense. But yeah, uh, there'll be, <laughs> yeah, there'll be chess notation to find. And then when they put the board together, and this is the last step, right? They're going to be going through this whole thing looking for pieces. Um, yeah, they have to find the move for checkmate and move the correct piece to put the opponent's king in checkmate. And that will pop open the, uh, the cash door. That'll be the last step. It is a 12-step sequential puzzle. Oh wow! So, uh, yeah, I, I'm doing this a little bit on faith because I don't have a library that said yes yet. But uh, we got a lot of libraries around. It's gonna plug. It has to plug into a wall. Um, yeah. Right. I'm not gonna put a card catalog out in the woods. No, it would deteriorate too fast, and that's a lot yeah. of money. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I've bought all. I just got all the wood last week, and uh, I think over this Christmas break, I'm gonna have some time on my wood shop and start. Putting the thing together. I mean, I figure that, it's at least a, at least a year till it's out. But yeah, keeps me busy. Right. So Gary's saying, love the chess uh, set idea. I I think that's really cool. I've never seen one like that. I love that idea. That's just. I'm just trying to think of yeah, library would be perfect for it. Um, even a, what about a game shop? Yeah, it could be. And of course, because it's inside, it can't be a traditional. It'll have to be a letterbox or a multi or something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, putting a cash inside a commercial venue. Yeah. Is the library, tricky. you'd be able to get the library would be better to put it at. Right. The yeah. library or a town hall would, would work. Right. Um, 
but uh, I've done a lot of not work, but I've I've held geocaching events at my our local library has like conference rooms and stuff, and I've done stuff with Boy Scouts at the library. We have a nice library in town, and I'm hoping they'll be able to help me find a corner to stick it in where because people maybe won't be as quiet as they should be. But you know, <laughs> I'm hopeful. Yeah. I'll find somewhere to put it. Yeah, that's you know, worst comes to worst, I'll find a commercial place and uh, appeal my case to HQ and see what happens. Right, right. I just that's just a really cool concept. I really love that, and I really do appreciate all the hard work you're putting into it and all the brain power. I'd be killing so many brain cells trying to figure that out. <laughs> it would be insane. And and I love the RFID aspect of it because that is a really fun way of doing this. And um, yeah, that's just. I'm just, I'm imagining it in my head. So the card catalog, d different drawers, they would have the yep. different pieces. In. So they got to right. go through all those drawers to find those pieces first off. Sure. Yep. Yep. So, it, so the reset, once again, pretty easy because it doesn't really matter which drawer they're putting the pieces in or am I wrong? It kind of does. And that I agree. I'm worried about the reset um, inside on each drawer. Uh, I'm going to use one of those laser burners, you know, kind of like, okay. a, what were we talking about earlier? Um, that you have one on your Christmas list. Yeah, I have one on my Christmas list, <laughs> and I'm gonna inside the drawer. On it's gonna say, when resetting, place the rook in here. You know, so it'll be clear what has to happen. And again, I am honestly, I'm worried about reset. That, um, but we'll see how it goes. And right, if I have a library person that's excited about this cache, maybe they'll help me maintain it a little bit too. Yeah, that that that's really cool, and I can't definitely going to have to have you on either back on here or on Gadget Talk somewhere. And once you get this all together, I can't wait to see in our group the pictures of this coming together. I'm I'm even more excited now that I understand really more of what's going on because you're I saw I've seen like I said I've seen on the, in the group the pictures mm -hmm. of your RFID stuff. Um, I was like this is really going to be really cool because I've seen your other smart caches, and I was like wow these are really great, and this Thanks. just blows me even further away so yeah um so i don't when i try to do a smart cache i always try to do the thing i'm worried about the most first right um and i've never done rfid before and i've certainly doing one rfid rfid is not too tough um putting multiple rfid readers on one arduino i have learned is is pretty tricky and i've been chatting with the group, getting ideas. Um, I eventually right. got a, what's called a multiplexer. Okay. Um, the, the problem is all of those RFID readers are at, they, they have the same address, right? They're the right. exact same <laughs> yeah. chip, so they have the same address. And so you cannot call them individually because okay. when you program it, you're saying, hey, send this bit of information to this address, but they're all at that address. So it wants to send it all to every chip, to every RFID reader. Right. So this little multiplexer, it kind of, um, it gives each one of those readers a new address. And so you can, uh, you can tell the multiplexer, hey, send it to this one. And it, it switches between them. And okay. uh, I've been learning. I understand, you know, I'm a programmer by profession. Um, it's right. the electronics that are killing me. Because <laughs> learning about, oh, this one has a floating... Uh, IP, voltage IP on it, and yeah, yeah, right. Okay. No, a floating, yeah. a floating voltage. So you have to pull it down or pull it up, and <laughs> I don't know which to do when or why. And yeah, it's right. it's a and it's a little bit of trial and error. But as you do smart caches, trial and error, it's it's a good way to burn out a chip, right. and then you got to order a new one. And yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that's what I love about the group that we're in, that smaller group, because I mean, Dave Wagner's in there, who's a Electrical engineer. Um, he is an electrical engineer. Yeah. Have you have you worked with Dave on any of this or? I have not on this. He and I have talked extensively about powering, um, and how to get <laughs> batteries to last. Yeah. But, that's, uh, yeah. You know, I've sent yeah. him circuit diagrams, and then in red he fixes my circuit diagrams, and half the time I'm like, "What does that symbol mean, Dave?" <laughs> I've I've been there. I've been there. I've googled. Like, what is this? Or I'll go. What's this? I'll send him a picture. Like, what is that one? Yeah, what's the squiggly that doesn't connect with a half circle around it? Yeah, no. <laughs> it almost makes me wish I was an electrical engineer. 
It's, yeah, some here too. So yeah, I, I really do love that. So, all right. So so ideal wise, you're saying Dave Ramsey's uh, Dave Ramsey, Chris Ramsey, yeah, Chris, Chris, Chris Ramsey, Dave Ramsey's the financial guy. Chris Ramsey. I don't know how many times I do that. Yeah. So if you want to find a money cash, you go to Dave. But if you want to find a gadget cash, go to Chris. Um, yeah, so. he does a lot of fun stuff. And some of those things that I see him do, it, it has me thinking I should just quit my job and build them based on what he says he's paying for them. Oh, yeah. No kidding. No kidding. Uh, it's like five figures he's spending on some of those little trick boxes. Yeah, must be nice. Must be it nice. It must be nice. Yeah. Well, so, whatever. He's a world-renowned magician, so I'm sure he has it. I'm sure he does. or I'm sure it's partially donated, too. Um, and I yeah. know it helps those companies, too. But, um, but yeah, really... I've gotten so many ideas from him, even the non-smart style caches from him mm. um, and just kind of reworking some different things. So, you know, yeah. One of the last caches I put out has some augmented reality in it. And I got that idea off one of his other uh, videos where, Oh, where the trick took is. The, yeah. Right, where you the, took. Yeah. And, and you the can see certain was on that one too. <laughs> um, that was a different one. Well, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. There's been so many. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. Fun to watch. Um, escape rooms. I got the gears. I have basically I have a cache where you have five gears and like ten pegs, and you've got to put the gears uh in the correct position, spin them around three times, and the letters on the gear spells the combination to the lock. It's a letter lock. Um, but okay. I got that from an escape room where you had to do almost the exact same thing. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not proud. It was a good idea. Hadn't seen it done yeah. as a geocache. Right. And uh I had the tools to make it, so I thought I'd give it a shot. That was one where I thought the instructions were really complicated, and I was worried about it. Like, because you know, all right, you have these five gears; they're all different shapes, and there's a start and a finish gear already up there on the board. It's like a two right. foot by two foot board, and there are these ten pins sticking out that the gears can fit on. You obviously you're not going to use all of them, and I'm like, and you have to put the gears in order. You can't like branch. Right. They have okay. to go one sequentially from start to finish. And then I'm like, and each gear has a red arrow on it. They have that red arrow has to start at the top before you start the spinning. And then you spin the start gear three times in a circle. And then you read the top letter off each gear in order. And that's the combination lock. And I'm like, this is just too complicated. <laughs> and um, I talked to a few people about it. They're like, no, I like it. And, you know, I put it out with a, I put out a set of six smart or okay. a set of six gadget caches together. It's the only non-smart gadget cache in the in the series, and it has right. the most favorite points. Yeah, and that's it's so, like I said, um, Chad and I have talked about this. That it seems like the non-smart caches, gadget caches, have higher favorite points. And I don't know what it is. I don't I just a lot of times. I know for us, those don't usually take as much work. <laughs> Certainly so, not as much maintenance. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely not. Because smart caches take a lot of maintenance on them. Right. So, but I just well, did Eric, my full run flipping batteries and everything. This has been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot. Love seeing these different caches. Love the Tetris. Love the RFID chess aspect of these. Um, and I've seen a lot. Of, I'll hear a lot more back later on from everybody that's watching this. People come back and watch it again. So, but thank you for joining me. Yeah. No, thanks for this, having me. This, workshop hangout um it's been a lot of fun um i hope everybody has great holidays coming up be safe um hug your loved ones spend some time with them if you can get out get out there and find some caches that'd be great uh to be safe but uh once again eric thanks for joining me and uh, i'm you. gonna drop you out hang on i'll come back with you once we get off air I'll, we'll talk sure. a little bit more um but i'm gonna go ahead and pull you on out um but thanks, everybody, for joining me. I really do hope you have enjoyed this live workshop build. I've seen some great ideas. I hope just like I've said before, um, I like sharing ideas and then whatever you guys can come up with. Um, just really have a great holiday season. Be safe out there. Um, just enjoy yourself. Enjoy being around friends and family. And uh, if you haven't heard from one of your friends or uh, family in a while, reach out to them and just say, hey, just been thinking about you. How you doing? Because a lot of people are having a lot of hard time during the season. So, but hey, don't go anywhere. You know, when this comes back, there'll be some videos over here once after this is over. So go check out one of these videos just right over here and find the story behind the cash. All right, everybody. Hope you have a great time and 